Hi, Tony from Songwriters Chop Shop here, and this is Songwriting Tips from Famous Songwriters. If you want to improve your songwriting skills, stick around till the end of this video because I'll be chop shopping tips from famous songwriters and turning them into actionable steps that you can apply to your songwriting today. This week on Songwriting Tips from Famous Songwriters, someone that needs no introduction, but I'll give him one anyway. It's Neil Young. Tip 1. Don't chase the rabbit. During an interview, when asked about the effortless nature in which he was able to tell a story in a song, Young responded, I don't try and think of them, I wait till they come. A metaphor may be that if you're trying to catch a rabbit, you don't wait right by the hole. Then the rabbit comes out of the hole, he looks around, you start talking to the rabbit, but you're not looking at it. He's free to come, free to go. And in that way, if the song happens, it happens. If it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. It doesn't matter. This sounds very zen, way for inspiration, but I don't think he literally means wait. Waiting is a state of mind, and while you're in that state of mind, there's a high probability that you'll be left waiting. I think he means play. The more you create, write, and play, the more likely you are to be inspired. It reminds me of something Jimi Hendrix once said. Do you, do you have to practice every day the way a violinist does? I mean, if you're not working, say you're off in England and you're just taking well, I, off I like a couple to, months, um, do you have to keep shape every day? Yeah, well, I like to like play to myself and like in the middle in the room or before we go on stage or something like this or whenever I feel like you know, whenever I feel down or depressed or whatever you know mm -hmm. I just go on and play and I can't practice so it's always constantly what do you call it like a jam you know it's hard for me to remember any notes because I'm constantly trying to create other things that's why I make a lot of mistakes he played all the time but he never practiced and play is the word we need to focus on here play is the secret to unlocking your creativity and mastering your craft it's easy to fall into the trap of wanting to be better, so we practice and practice. After all, practice makes perfect, right? But what if we looked at it in a different way and just gave ourselves permission to play? If you are a great artist, your so-called periods of practice, when you sit for hours and study your technique, you will not do that effectively unless it is a pleasure for you. You have to come to the point where going over it again and again is a dance. The comprehension of music is in understanding one note. See, this is the real secret of life, to be completely engaged with what you're doing in the here and now. And instead of calling it work, realize that this is play. G.K. Chesterton once said that the angels fly because they take themselves lightly. There's a reason it's called playing music and not working music. And I think that's what Neil was getting at. Tip two, learn to trust yourself. You have to trust yourself because no one else matters. There's nobody else that matters. It's just over if you start looking to other people. Learning to trust yourself can be easier said than done. For Neil Young, with a proven track record, he can just say, well, I'm a f***ing legend, so I can trust myself. But what if you don't have that kind of success to back you up? How can we know the difference between trusting ourselves and just blindly accepting any old crap we come up with? Sure, it can be useful to be a little bit critical. It can help us to realize an uninspired idea or our current limitations, but it can also just stifle your creativity. So what do you do? Listen to songs you love and identify why you love them and why they work so well as songs. This will start to hone your instincts about what works and what doesn't. And in time of doubt, ask yourself, do I doubt what I'm doing or am I doubting it because of what someone else said? Then check if that someone else was even your intended audience. Don't overthink it, make decisions and move on. The beauty of songs is, that you can always go back and rewrite and rework them. Maybe a little time and space will give you the perspective you need to see solutions for any problems. So trust your gut and don't care what others think. Having said that, it's always good to have a confidant, someone you trust to share ideas with. This confidant should 1. Know what they're talking about. 2. Have your best interests at heart. Not the kind of best interests that tell you you'll never make it and it's a shit business. I do believe in you. I just know you're gonna fail. 3. Someone who understands you and that is also honest. Maybe this won't be just one person either. And if you don't have anyone like that, well then you have to become that. And use that self-doubt and turn the tables on it. Instead of beating you down, let it be the spark that ignites your own creative flame. Know that everyone has doubt, so don't let it hold you back. Confidence is a good thing, but being overconfident is usually just fear wearing a mask. People who don't doubt themselves are usually overbearing and egotistical and not half as great as they think they are. Remember, the need to be perfect and totally original is actually a form of self-editing. Editing should only be done after the inspiration calms down. Tip 3. Being ready is easier than getting ready. Neil Young has been playing music since he was 12 years old and immersed himself in music because that was his passion. And if you learn your craft through passion, when inspiration strikes, you know exactly what to do with it. So many songwriters learn their craft this way. Listen to what Paul McCartney had to say about it. Where do you think it comes from? Where do you think... You know what? My dad was very musical. 
and I used to listen to a lot of what he did. So a lot of music went in, you know, and I listened to records and watching films and stuff. So I always think of it like my computer got loaded with a lot of data from all the songs I heard, all the old songs. And so when I finally came to write, I kind of printed it all out, you know. And so I think there was a lot of information in my brain. So you had a lot of reference up there. A lot, there of, a lot of stuff there, yeah. Tip four, be accepting of failure. The other thing you have to be willing to do, and you have to really be able to embrace it and accept it, and really welcome it into your life with open arms and a wide, wide vision, is failure. Be sure to welcome failure. <laughs> Always <laughs> say, you're okay with me, failure, come on in. Because then, you have no fear. No one writes a song and wants to be told it sucks. In our culture, failure is seen as a bad word. But here's the thing about our culture and its words. Most of them can mean more than one thing. So what if we flip that perspective again and see failure as feedback, just part of the process of getting where we want to be? Then it becomes a lot easier to invite in. No one wants to fail, but we can all agree that feedback is important to create something worthwhile. When we see someone being successful, it can look from the outside like it just happened. But look at all these so-called failures that hit the big time. Elvis Presley was told after his first performance at the Grand Ole Opry, You ain't going nowhere, son. You ought to get back to driving a truck. Even Mozart met with failure several times. He was dismissed as a court musician, an archduke called his music noise, and his last three compositions flopped massively. Lady Gaga and Katy Perry were both dropped from labels before hitting the big time. Jay-Z had to start his own label because no one would sign him. The 1975 were rejected by every record label before they eventually signed to Polydor. They couldn't have done this if they believed they were failures. They all chose to look at it as vital feedback. If you never have these so-called setbacks, you will never learn to grow and appreciate success when you get it. As Thomas Edison once said about creating the light bulb, I have not failed, I've just found 10,000 ways to rip off Nikolai Tesla. I mean, I've just found 10,000 ways that won't work. Next time your perceived failure is getting you down, ask yourself this. On a scale of 1 to 10, how bad is the situation really? How important will this be in 6 months time, or 12 months time, or in 6 years time? Are you making the best response to this? What happens when you believe in this thought of failure? Who or what would you be without this thought? What lessons can you take from this? Tip 5. Honor the inspiration. Usually I sit down and I go until I'm trying to think. As soon as I start thinking, I quit. Then when I have an idea out of nowhere, I start up again. When the idea stops, I stop. I don't force it. So when the inspiration strikes, he never turns it away. But how do we stop thinking? It sounds kind of like meditation or mindfulness. Empty your mind. Be formless. Shapeless. Like water. Now you put water into a cup, it becomes the cup. You put water into a bottle, it becomes the bottle. You put it in a teapot, it becomes the teapot. Now water can flow or it can crash. Be water, my friend. Every day is different and every idea that you have. Or, uh, the one thing I will say is if you hear something in your head, immediately stop and pay attention get it down, whatever it is, if you can play guitar, play your guitar, play it, try to remember what it is you hear, especially first thing in the morning, the first thing that you play, the first thing that you hum, whatever it is, there's a meaning and you have to respect it came from somewhere and there's a source that delivers it to you. So if, you, if something comes along that's new and different or something that you recognize as being something that you don't, aren't familiar with, you should grab it and keep it.